In the perfect world, if you were to set up a target at your zero range of say 25 meters and then point your rifle's barrel at it, you would hope that when the rifle is fired that the pellet would strike the target dead center of the bullseye like this demonstration shows. In reality though, this doesn't happen and it's in this part of the DVD that I'm going to try and explain why. In reality then, once you fire at the target with your barrel pointed dead center of it, you will notice that the pellet misses the center of the target and falls low. This is because gravity, which is a force here on Earth, is constantly pulling down on the underside of the pellet from it exiting the muzzle all the way along its flight path, trying to pull the pellet back down to Earth. This effect, caused by gravity, has now caused the flight path of the pellet to become curved. The flight path is now called the pellet's parabolic trajectory after the shape of its parabolic curve. To compensate for this curved trajectory, we now fit a telescopic sight and adjust the elevation turrets to bring the scope's crosshair, or line of sight as it's known, to match where our pellet impacted at our given zero range. This now gives us two new points that is of great interest to us as shooters. These being one, the primary zero, and secondary zero. What you are now looking at is an extremely exaggerated and blown out of proportion diagram showing the scope correctly zeroed and looking at a target parallel to your own eye line. As you will note the barrel is now elevated. This in reality is only a small amount but for demonstration purposes I've made it more pronounced to see. The reason the barrel is elevated is because we're now looking through a correctly zeroed scope that has been set up to compensate for parabolic trajectory at our given zero range. The pellet is now literally being lobbed towards the target. What now becomes apparent is three other areas important to us as shooters. The first area is where the pellet's flight path is above the zeroed scope's line of sight. This area is where old under needs to be applied to bring the trajectory of the pellet downwards to meet the scope's line of sight. The other two areas are near the muzzle of the rifle and past our primary zero range, where old over needs to be applied to bring the pellet's trajectory up to meet the scope's line of sight. So how do we reduce the angle then for the old over and old under? Well there's a couple of ways to do it, but the main way that people seem to do it is by opting to use the 177 calibre rifles. The 177 calibre has got a lot flatter parabolic trajectory than the 22. This is because it shoots a lighter, faster pellet than the heavier, slower 22 calibre. Another way to do it is to change the range you zero at. In this demonstration you can see a 177 rifle being zeroed at 33.3 meters. This gives you the best point blank range for a one inch kill zone. However, you, what you can see is there's quite an arc above the scope's line of sight which is depicted by the red line and below it. What you're now looking at is the same 177 calibre rifle, this time zeroed at 30 metres. If you look at the diagram you'll see the arced parabolic trajectory has now moved down closer to the scope's line of sight. So what we're saying here is there's not that much old under required from 15 to 30 metres. If you want to cut out applying old under altogether and only have to concentrate on applying old over and you're using a 177 sub 12 foot pound rifle, what you can do is zero that rifle at 19 meters. If you're looking at the profile now, you can see that I would never have to apply old under in this scenario. This procedure at zeroing at 19 meters is used a lot by hunter field target shooters. The reason they do this is because a lot of their targets fall between 17 out to about 25 meters and as you can see parabolic trajectory cuts the scope's line of sight perfectly at these distances making an easy shot just by using the crosshair.